Hello and welcome to vlog number 17. Today I'm going to talk about my deep brain stimulation system and how it can be adjusted to combat my Parkinson's disease symptoms. When the system is first installed it needs frequent adjustment to take account of the swelling in the brain caused by the insertion of the DBS leads. As the swelling subsides so different stimulation will have different effects and previously effective stimulation can become ineffective. I've been told that it can take two or three months for the brain to return to normal and this explains why the system needs reprogramming so often in the first year or so. Initially to cope with the changing stimulation requirements as the brain recovers and then, more experimentally, to find out the settings which suit the patient the best. When I had my operation in April 2016 it was switched on just two days later and was adjusted on a daily basis during the ten days that followed. On returning home, I made a tune-up appointment about every four to six weeks up until October 2016. I must at that point have achieved a satisfactory and consistent level of symptom control because I didn't return to hospital for reprogramming until March 2017 when persistent tremor in my left leg saw me booking an appointment. When you get to see your DBS programmer they ask you loads of questions about the effects the current settings have had and the reason for returning for adjustment. The programmer then attempts to adjust the stimulation to provide a positive effect on the problematic symptoms whilst causing no or minimal side effects. There are four contacts on each of the leads in my brain and the neurostimulator can be programmed to deliver stimulation through any one of these contacts or a combination of them. They can control things such as voltage, polarity, frequency and pulse width and I'm told that things can get pretty complicated when necessary. My programming was successful using just basic settings initially. As my Parkinson's progresses and changes so the settings of my DBS system will also have to be changed and I hope that my system continues to be as effective at controlling or concealing my symptoms in the future as it is currently. Also I'm making adjustments they keep a close eye on the symptom they're attempting to improve which in my case is tremor and constantly check to see if the adjustments are having any undesirable effects on things such as your voice, your balance and walking, rigidity, slowness of movement, your mood or if stimulation is causing any odd sensations such as tingling or pins and needles. It's funny but when I'm asked if my voice is okay I know whether or not it has been affected before I even open my mouth so I can answer yes or no with absolute confidence. Balance and walking isn't so obvious until I'm asked to stand up and walk down the corridor. Once the programmer is satisfied with the settings you are told to go away for a couple of hours, see how it goes and return for further adjustment if necessary. I have only returned for readjustment the same day on one occasion. It is my experience that it takes several days for new settings to bed in Although my last adjustment was to calm the tremor in my left leg and this adjustment was effective on the day it is now slightly worse than it was prior to being adjusted. I do have some adjustment that I can make to the simulation myself so I will try increasing the voltage on my left side to see if I can get the tremor back under control without causing any adverse effects such as dyskinesia which is an involuntary movement caused by overstimulation like a tick or weakness of voice if I can't improve things by making adjustments then I'll have to book another appointment. So, fingers crossed. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.